Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and all. Dave K here today. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I am making my way to the bus stop now. And today we're going to have a thrilling day in Geneva, nice full day in Geneva, exploring the Geneva City Pass. So I've got the City Pass here in Geneva. We'll see how it compares to the Zurich card. It looks like I might get some more boat options and some more bus and trolley tour options, which I'm excited for. Perhaps a few less museums, but I don't think I mind that. And I'm looking forward to sharing it with you here today. I'm gonna make my way into town, get some information on it, and probably catch that first boat ride. Let's go. Take a look at this beautiful waterfront view here this morning, right by where we'll catch some boats, and the information office should be right around here as well. Just gotta figure out where that is. <laughs> So, having a bit of a tricky time finding this office, but we'll check over at the boat dock, because we want to be there anyways, and we'll see what that looks like. So, it's a beautiful little boat dock here. It appears to be at the base of the uh, Lake Geneva here. Lake Geneva kind of bottom at, at Geneva, whereas it goes all the way up through a lot of other parts of Switzerland. We're just over there trying to figure out where this building is. I think maybe it's just odd numbers on this side, and maybe it is on this side here. Uh, we'll see. That being said, we get to enjoy a nice waterfront view. Look at that waterfall in the distance there. That's really, really cool. I did write down myself some hours for when some things are open, so we'll see what we can figure out if we can't find the information station down here. Looks like this might be their office, though, so that would be handy if it is. All right, y'all, it was indeed down here, but I figured out that two uh, train rides and uh, um, a boat weren't, weren't actually on the menu, or they were closed for the season, things like that, so... Yeah, interesting to see what's available. We'll see how it all shakes out. All right, I have taken the bus to close to where the paddle boats are. One of the few things that's open before noonish here. I'm gonna try to catch some of those boats and such at noon, but uh, catch paddle boats while we have some time. And uh, we will see how this one goes. Uh, we'll see if they're even open. She's like, oh, I don't know. They might be closed winter time. <laughs> A lot of things closed winter time or Christmas markets or, you know, just doing some repairs to the cable car, so that's closed uh, for the month, <laughs> is what it is. Take a look out at the beautiful views here. I'm looking out at the lake, the water, and beautiful perspective around us here. I maybe think that rent-a-boat kiosk right there is where we're going. Not quite sure, but nice to see that water jet shooting up in the sky as well. Not sure why they have it, but it seems to be running constantly here. So, here we are. Hope you all enjoy these beautiful sights. You've got these ships over that way. You've got that water jet over that way. I'm still looking to figure out the boat rental spot, if it's even open. <laughs> we'll see. That being said, it is cold, so I get it. If they're closed, you know, I'm like, oh man, so much is closed. And it seems like they are as well. Um, but I guess I get it, in a way, because it's so cold. Looking at this, and I don't, I don't speak French, but you know, it ends kind of September there and starts up in like March-ish. Um, so again, I'm pretty sure whatever this is at least isn't running. I'm gonna try the door. And if not, I guess that's that. Yeah, unfortunately I'm pretty confident I'm in the right spot, um, but doors are locked. There's really no movement out here. There's no boats on the water. There's only smoke on the water. Mostly from those jets. Um, but nice to walk by, <laughs> enjoy some sights from here. So please note, if you are shopping for the Geneva Pass, uh, certainly make note of the months that you're in, right? And so, um, yeah, we got no luck here for the, uh, holiday time on the water, even though it says on their site, uh, and on Google Maps that they're open. So this was an exciting idea, so kind of depressing that they're closed. Not working out quite as I'd hoped here in Geneva with the Geneva City Pass. At least the Zurich card was pretty good about what was actually closed. <laughs> yeah, even though we didn't love some of that. Well, let's see what else is on our list here. All right, y'all, take a look at the Le Jet de, de Genevieve here, or Le Jet de Geneva, a giant waterfall out in the sky there. We're gonna walk down and take a peek since we're walking back in this direction anyways. Uh, <laughs> some of the things I would have seen for free anyways. But the boats, hopefully before long, there's another hour and change before that main boat is running and we'll be able to do some other stuff too. So browsing while we wait. 
I will say it is a beautiful boat dock, and perhaps if we come back during a warmer season, we can enjoy the beautiful sights of Geneva from the water, because I could see that being fun. But here they are docked at the port. And a bit of an aerial view from the high ground here, if you will. You've got this little walking path. They make it pretty accessible for you to look out at that spraying Count Han. I'm not sure I should go too much closer to it because I'm getting wet from here. That might be rain, actually. But it is beautiful to see. I'm glad we're getting a chance to check it out. And it's quite chilly today, if I haven't mentioned, by the way. It is, it's cold, too. And now we are the closest to it of everybody out here currently. There's a sign that says that, which I'm not really sure what that says, and I'm glad we had a chance to see it. Really cool fountain, and we'll make our way, head back towards the boat. Maybe we can find some food on the way. In a way, I can appreciate the beauty of it. the quiet and peaceful waters out here as well, with nobody out there sailing or doing anything on the water. So I guess trade-offs of the season. I was looking at a few of the museums, um, and the amount of time it would take to get there would leave me maybe half an hour at the museum. Not sure it's worth trying to squeeze something in. Maybe I can grab some food, some snacks, before <laughs> the boat main boat ride, or some of the main boat rides. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here you have the avocado toast. Excited to dig in and give it a shot. Certainly looks different. I smell some vinegar in there, which isn't my favorite thing. But I'm pleased to discover that they don't charge for water here. At least this restaurant in Geneva. Yay, let's give it a shot. All right, so a nice little brunch overall. Now I'm going to see if I can catch the taxi boat, whoever that is, uh, to the other side to catch that real boat ride. Here we are, little port here, where the taxi boats should pick us up. You can see, it says it comes every 10 minutes on that sign. You've got the sign, you've got the waterfall fountain. Nice to see as we make our way. I think this might be the Christmas market, y'all. Christmas market. I'm trying to find that boat tour. I only have a few minutes now, so that one takes off. Just got up from the other dock, and she told me I have to kind of go up the road here. So, still trying to figure this one out. But the Christmas market complicates it, indeed. It looks like another thing that just kind of doesn't exist out here, y'all. I'm walking around looking for it, but not a whole lot of luck. Ticket office doors are closed over there. Uh, so who knows? Cool to see the Christmas market stuff out here. Nice little uh, kiosks they've got set up all around. But again, leaves me a bit confused. People pointing me back and forth in opposite directions to find this boat. And at this point, I've missed it, but I'm not seeing it in the water either. So perhaps this is just another one of those things that doesn't exist right now. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm even just looking out here to see if I can see it for the next time period when they run it, and I'm not seeing it anywhere. I'm seeing the taxi boats, I'm seeing people walk across that bridge over there, but certainly not seeing a cow looking boat out here anywhere. So, another one of those things leaving me a bit confused. If I can find it, I'm walking back to the information building. Here are ticket points that are closed. Uh, I saw the sign, funnily enough, with the bus routes. I guess that one's closed too because they've set the Christmas markets up here. That's what she told me. She's like, oh yeah, they also closed this train because this year they put the Christmas markets here. So that one's not available either. <laughs> so there's quite a few closed items. Uh, this one she wasn't even sure if I had access to normally. But I'm going to see, I think I'm now looking at uh, the access points to the information center. See if I can get back down there and figure it out. All right, so I spoke to the woman here. It's yet another summertime only activity. So again, note all the summertime only activities uh, as differing from the, what the website says is summer only. There's even more that's only summer only. And uh, we will make our way to the bus tours, it's like a hop on hop off style bus. So that'll be nice to check out. <laughs> and it is running. At least she's pretty confident of that. 
Here is the Ritz-Carlton, though, for those who enjoy a nice, fancy hotel. And you've got this beautiful structure here. I saw this one in some pictures, part of this park over there on our right, walking to the bus now, but perhaps we'll get some information on the bus about that structure. And it's a little tough behind the trees as we're passing by, but I figured I'd give you a bit of a closer look as we go here. Look at that, really, really beautiful to see. I think there's a restaurant on the other side of it, which is what I was looking at in terms of, oh, you could sit there and look out at this, um, but I lost track of that this morning thinking I was gonna catch a boat. <laughs> it's a lot of schedule changes today. There you go, one more look, open the park space with the restaurant in front of it as we head towards the buses. All right, I think we found them here. This little bus parking lot she was referring to. Let's see if we can find the right bus. Waiting around to get some information here from inside, but it says it's Swiss Tours online. So I'm gonna walk up to the Swiss Tours bus guy and see if he can help me figure it out. Unless of course his door is not open, in which case, forget about it. All right, so I was informed that we'll be here in three minutes. However, it's not here yet. So I just kind of wait for it. I <laughs> am waiting and I don't know, man. I mean, this is certainly a bus lot, like just everybody bus lot. Um, I'm just saying, it's Geneva. Je 
Have you noticed that the fourth leg of the chair is severed in the middle? This is a strong message to all countries to ban the use of cluster bombs and to remember all man's mind victims. Mais je n'ai pas respecté les proportions du chat, j'ai pas pris le chat, j'ai agrandi. Après j'ai dû travailler sur qu'est-ce que qu -ce que je vais lui pour, pour qu'elle ait une certaine indépendance qui va renforcer cette, cette cassure, cette blessure derrière. And we have a five minute photo stop here at the broken chair. If you take a look, massive broken chair uh, in front of, it seems like all around the UN building by Daniel Berset here. It's probably a Daniel de Frey. But uh, there's the sign, there's the broken chair. There are a couple of these. You have the United Nations building behind our bus there. I guess the photo stop is for the chair of people, but, uh, but I am here looking at the UN building as well. So really, really cool to see this photo stop. Again, nice little tour that we're getting to experience. You know, not super in-depth, thrilling, etc. But uh, certainly a nice overview of Geneva. And I'm glad I'm doing it, especially because it's included with my pass. One more peek across the street. UN building. I'm nice to uh, nice to see here. And uh, yeah, I'm glad we stopped off for it. I think I might come back another day to see the UN building a little bit more closely. Although you can't go inside without uh, like pre-admission, I'm told. Maybe we'll see the other side with a, another photo stop another day, and we'll get back on board. And related geophysical sciences. This magnificent statue symbolizes four men from different races and different work postures. The first is working in the fields, the second in the factory, the third is a miner, and the fourth a fisherman. Mine, you find them? I'm Hans Wilson, founder of the Rolex Watch. On discovering the beauty of this idyllic place and the view from the garden over the lake, she was heard to exclaim, This is the Pearl of Lake Geneva. along the bar of Morgul, which according to ancient century folklore was frequented by Casanova himself. Opposite the lake stands a magnificent villa constructed in the 19th century, today used by the Institute of Origino. There is also the Museum of the History of Science of the City of Geneva. Lake Geneva, or Le Limon, as it is called locally, was originally formed by glacial erosion. It is one of the largest lakes in Europe, with a surface area of 582 kilometers and a depth of 310 meters. It has been said that it is 
the largest reservoir of fresh water in Central Europe and acts as a natural border between Switzerland and France. It also borders three Swiss cantons, Vaux, Geneva, and Valais. This is the Brunswick Monument, which in fact is a mausoleum. That's right, this Gothic style structure is in fact a tomb, not just any old tomb. This was constructed in the 14th century for the Italian family dynasty called the Scaligeri, who reigned over Verona at that time. Really interesting tour overall, you know, it wasn't as fast paced perhaps, perhaps, and riveting as some other city sightseeing tours when you uh, can use some of those other companies. It's just Geneva's, I guess, Swiss tours here. Um, but some really cool information in Geneva for sure. I wasn't all that interested in like the Intercontinental by the UN until I learned that was where uh, Bill Clinton and Fidel Castro stayed at the same time. They managed to make them never see each other. And I think it was Gorbachev and someone else uh, signed some papers there too. Uh, so really, really cool. To, to hear some of the history, certainly a peacekeeping international nation here. Uh, take a look though at this mausoleum as well. So this was that cafe I was looking at earlier and really, really interesting to learn that this was also a mausoleum, a tomb for an Italian family, I think, that ruled Verona at the time, they were saying. So, wow, it was awesome to uh, get some background on this one too and look at some pictures with it. I don't know if this tour would have necessarily been worth 25 francs, but I'm certainly glad I did it with my pass, I will say. And here is your Christmas market info, running from November, mid-November here to December, uh, until a couple days before Christmas. So, we're a little late on the vlogs, in case you couldn't tell, running behind, but you know, enjoying the adventure. So, not worrying about that too much. Now, the timing on the next activity is a little sloppy. Let me show you the view while we're uh, telling you about that. Walking under the bridge here, just wanted to check this view out, super cool. Um, either it's the uh, train car, it's the 45 minute train ride, and I think it's in like half an hour. So a little bit of standing around waiting for it. And then I might just miss the first boat ride at 3.30. But there's another boat ride at 4.30. So I'm thinking I'll do it that way as opposed to trying to squeeze a museum in between now and the um, boat ride because the train stops before the boat does. So we'll try to do both. Wow, and I'm like in water level right now where I'm walking. That's pretty crazy. But, um, yeah, my thought around that is like we do the highlights and the museums are cool and all, like natural history, sounds promising. Um, but if I had to pick, it's gonna be the train and the boat. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna do train and boat. We're gonna do it uh, with the train first just because uh, the train closed earlier. So if I do the boat first, I'm not gonna make the train today. And I'm taking in these sights along the way anyway. So one more beautiful outward view before we make our way to that train destination. Excited to check it out. This is a nice viewpoint here as well. Enjoying the beautiful Geneva scenery. And it's warming up. Thanks, son. Thanks for showing up. I do have to say, again, it's brightening up to be a beautiful day here. Sun coming out, warming us up. Gotta love, there's a bridge front. I haven't really walked too much of the waterfront here at Lake Geneva, but I thought I get the chance. I'm glad it's a good time for it. Take a look around this beautiful sight. Well, we are what I believe is at our Old Town Tours mini train car stop here. Uh, it's, it's a nice, nice waterfront, you know? Inland's all right, but the water's where it's at. I'm gonna see if there's maybe a shop too, sandwiches or something like that for food. All right, I was recommended to the sandwich shop here, Mafalda by the donut shop down the street, so let's check it out. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello, morning. Hi, great, morning. This one? Okay. Okay. This is smoky. Smoky? This is black pepper and this is chili too. Chili, is that what that is? Yeah. Okay. If you want smoked vegetables, like two, it is one. Mm -hmm. All right, I've got myself a very interesting sandwich from Mafalda, like a spicy meat. You've got a chili cheese, tomatoes, uh, some sort of lettuce, like a arugula or something, and then a pistachio dressing. So we'll see how that is. Uh, looking forward to it. Not bad, not a bad sandwich at all. You know, you got a nice uh, spicy meat flavor in there. I can't really taste too much of that pistachio sauce, but it's a bit of a stinky cheese, you know, as very common the Swiss out here. 
but I, I certainly don't mind it. It's a nice sandwich. Glad I'm checking them out if you're looking for one for takeaway. But again, things are more expensive out here. I see the train ahead, so I'm gonna try to jump on it and we'll check it out. So I'm not really sure where we scan on, but we are seated at least <laughs> on it and uh, we'll see where it goes. On our way now with the uh, lovely music playing overhead. And you have the beautiful view of Lake Geneva on either side. Yes, we're all along on our way on this train tour. Let's do it. <laughs> Didn't realize Geneva is the third most populated, not the second. So, we already know Lake Geneva, one of the biggest in Europe. Uh, I was hearing on this one that the biggest, but it, I think maybe you said they used to be the biggest, because now it's the second, I believe. I'm not sure. This is a cute little tour too, though. A little bit of audio narration can be a little hard to hear sometimes, but nice sightseeing. It's funny to see this thing go through like roads and just like where pedestrians and buses and cars and bikes are. Um, but it's cool to be able to see, again, Old Town uh, bus tour or train tour here. Let's see what they got for us. An Austrian statue of General Dufour. Born in 1787, Guillaume Arnaud Dufour became commander in chief of the Swiss army, founded a military academy, modernized the country's defenses, reconstructed Geneva's ports and quays, taught hydrology, geodesy, and geometry at the university, and set up a geodetic and triangulation survey to produce complete maps of Switzerland's mountainous surface, which are still the centre. The statue of the General Dufour, which is the name of the Dufour, modernized the fortification of the city, reconstructed and restored. At your right, the Grand Theatre, constructed seems like there are no rules for the mini train here on the sidewalk and i'm sure we're going to hear about the park, park yeah because it was created two centuries ago oh my gosh we're going in heck yeah parts of the town the identification of trees with a tag is an inheritance from the days where this promenade was the town's botanical garden it was recreated in 1783 Today, the bastions represent the dendrology promenade, the part of botany that deals with trees. <laughs> nice stroll through the park, the park indeed. This is kind of cool. It's certainly, uh, again, it, with it being included, I'm glad I'm doing it. Also houses the University Public Library. University of Geneva. Uh, at least the public library is here, it sounds like. That's nice. I think it's both. No, I think it's the university and the public library. That's cool. Yeah, nice to see it all. They're talking about uh, new Greek style or something like that, Nero Greek style. It's a little hard to make out the, uh, the audio sometimes. But the different buildings are built in different styles. And just the sightseeing is really nice, quite honestly. Just the ride is a little bumpy on these uh, tiles, but that's okay. It's surrounded by houses with narrow facades and typical architecture for the old city of Geneva. Cool. In the center of the square, which was formerly the marketplace, was a fountain of the 18th century. A votre droite. His request, the church was given to the British who had taken refuge in Geneva for religious reasons. The most celebrated of these... Where'd our audio go? This looks familiar. The cathedral's right here. Huh. That's cool. Oh, it's John Knox Chapel here. The Knox Rest Reformation. He was the same one that we saw in, uh, in Scotland. Puis Saint Pierre et Belle Fontaine. Then from the 9th century, 
and rebuilt in 1334 after a fire which destroyed nearly half the town. This historic building houses the Museum of Old Geneva. Mm, yes. Avec le droit, les intérêts, la plus ancienne demeure privée de la ville, édifice de fondation datant du 9e siècle, reconstruite en 1334, and for a long time served as an arsenal, hence its name. Today, it houses the archives of Geneva. A votre gauche, in 1455. A votre gauche. Is the town hall right here? It did say on our left, but sometimes only was a bit behind. So, there's something more obvious coming out, but it might be that. Fut construite en 19. A votre gauche. Statue Pictet de Rochemont. Pictet. Bertelier was imprisoned in the subterranean part of the tower and beheaded on this square Wow. Here's that clock tower now, and we actually stood out here waiting for a bus at one point, so that's cool. Get to re-see everything. And turning up the street here from Bel Air, through the sidewalks, back to our starting point. It was a fun little tour, I gotta say. Nice to check this one out, too. I think good use of the, uh, the Geneva Pass as well, so I'm glad I jumped on board and gave it a ride. And Winkelried, hero of one of the most famous battles in Swiss history, the Battle of Sennepal. Place de Berge. Another fun little cute one. I'm glad I had a chance to check out. It's worth it for being included on the car. I'm going to take my underbridge, and it seems like I might actually catch the boat at 3.30, which I'm super excited for. It saves me an hour of trying to figure out the middle. So, let's see if we can run down there and catch it. <laughs> Check out the size of some of these birds here. That's crazy. All right. One more pass through underneath. I still really think this concept is cool. Kind of walking underwater level here. Um, those chonky birds were, were so funny. And I'm certainly appreciating a lot of things about Switzerland here. Again, it's chilly, but you've got some beautiful sights all around. You can certainly appreciate the international and peace focus. And, uh, you know, that resonates with me for sure. So thanks for uh, the fun thus far. Let's take a boat. Check out the Nutcracker down here, right as we step on board. We've got staircase upstairs decorated for the holidays already. I like it. So it looks nice from up here, but you gotta be going first on, I think, to get a table. So we'll see what happens out here. Wow, this is super cool to see as well. Now you've got a few options. You can try to squeeze in with somebody else at a table. You can uh, try sitting or standing outside, or I can stand around. So. We'll see how things shake out, but um, maybe I'll set a bench like this. But I'm looking forward to the views. So anyways, this is really cool too. You can watch the movement, the gears and all that operating inside. I don't know if I've seen anything like that before. Active motion of the boat operating. I mean, you gotta appreciate it at least a bit. Am I right? You can see these, uh, these paddles here beginning to turn and we will be on our way. All right. You can see we've got our operator down there as well. And yeah, gear is turning. Both, uh, both, this thing is moving. Oh, and it seems like we're changing angle. So yeah, we're, we're doing something. And a bit of the view from outside. I feel like we're gonna get the best views from out here as we are sailing. It's absolutely beautiful indeed. Oh, there's a French flag on the front of this boat, which I guess in some ways can make sense because this can be French waters as well. Beautiful sights all around us though. You know, I realize, I don't even know where this boat is going, but we're going to enjoy the ride and look out at all these beautiful sights. I might go between in and out side just to, to keep warm, um, but it's nice to see these sights for sure. And there's plenty of seating out here, which is nice too. Here on our right is the fountain that we saw earlier spraying up into the sky there. I guess it's just always spraying. That's, that's pretty intense. I wonder, you know, what, what the costs, what the purposes are, but it's certainly nice to see. You can see the sun fading behind the ship there a bit on our right as we continue to sail around here. Different sights on the two sides, and it's even getting busier out here on the deck uh, because people like the sights for sure. 
All right, one more peek around here to make sure we can enjoy all the sights outdoors with you. I'm sitting for a bit, just taking it all in, but I'm, I'm really getting chilly, so I think I'm gonna head back inside. Land on this side, we've got the far distance on that side. More of the boat behind us. It's a beautiful ride, indeed. All right, so take a look at this beautiful view from the inside here, so we get to enjoy it and stay toasty. That's a nice combo. This is such a massive lake, right? It's such a massive waterfront. Again, some of it's in France, some of it's in Switzerland. It's uh, really crazy to be out here, just to kind of ride it around. You see this really nice indoor seating area. We got some stuff on the table here. I wanted to show you real quick uh, the view of, yeah, let me show you. I can leave my stuff there for a second. The view of these rotors running. Look at that, kind of tossing around in there. We got these mechanisms twirling here, and that one really splashing away. It's cool to see. And saw the sun kind of setting ish back this way. You gotta come out for some of these beautiful perspective, beautiful angles. And, uh, you know, enjoy the bits at least while we're kind of a bit warmer from earlier. Smoke on the water. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> I almost fell there. Yeah, that's beautiful. Check out that uh, that land there on our left. I don't even know. Oh, that's that's where we left. You can see the water shooting up. That's quite some visibility on that, which I enjoy. And I have no idea how far we're going or how far we are. I have an idea of how far we are looking at the map. But <laughs> yeah, so vast, beautiful. One more look outside here. You've got that sun setting hour. There's the clouds, with the sun setting back there. Really beautiful views all around us. So I figured share it with you at least once more. I'd love to maybe check out the upstairs deck too, but we'll see how that goes. You can tell we are approaching Geneva again with a little fountain up there. And I was looking at activities. It seems like everything closes at pretty much five, except this one museum closes at six and that's closed for like a year and a half. So uh, we'll see what happens. And upstairs, which I took a quick look at earlier, but didn't really notice they got ice cream as well as like this coffee bar. I'm gonna check out outside uh, because seating is full still. Here we go, view from upstairs. Wow, that's beautiful. We've got the mountains in front of us. So we head back towards Geneva, although it's much more crowded up here too. It's nice to see. So the front of the ship felt even colder upstairs. So I'm on the back of the ship now. This is a nice view. You've got the Swiss flag on the back as well. Some nice sights around us. And we will get some selfies back here too, but really, really nice to see. And I, again, I think the back's a little warmer for some reason, you know, wind breaking perhaps on the front. So we have made it back now with those beautiful mountain views and the waterfront. Again, I'm not sure what's next, but certainly a nice boat ride. One more look outwards here for your first person view. As we head in, the sunset going on in the backdrop. It's, uh, I think it's really a question of do we do this again or do we just call it at this point? Those are our only options, so I'm not sure yet. Another little walking path there. I haven't tried yet to walk out to this little lighthouse looking thing. I'm not sure I'm missing all that much though if I don't, because it's cold and doesn't seem to be all that much, but nice to see it all in the boat indeed. And we are feeling a bit of the drizzle from this one as we're passing the, what do you call it? Giant fountain of Geneva. <laughs> it was nice, got some pictures of it and you can't quite see it through. You're just seeing a reflection of the water here, but that's cool still. So actually that might be through now that I look at it. Yeah. Overall, I am really glad I caught it before the sunset to get to see this one with a full day of light. It certainly makes it a bit nicer in my opinion, at least. So, I was between one more cruise and uh, making our way offward, and um, he told me the city pass only good for one cruise, so I guess that means we are calling it a day. It was certainly a cool boat though, indeed a fun one. Glad we stopped off for this one. And I would say, I mean, three three full activities here today. A pretty, uh, pretty productive day. I mean, <laughs> we got a decent bit considering today. All right, good news. Just stopped by the tourist office and it seems like Pate Philippe, the watch museum, is still open. I think it's Pate Philippe, if I recall correctly. I'll look at the spelling. But um, they're open till six instead of five. So let's see if we can squeeze one museum in tonight before we call it. And here we are for our final stop, the Patek or Patek Philippe Museum. Let's check it out. Nice. Very cool feeling indeed.
Really, really cool to see Patek Philippe Museum. The antiques part was certainly the best, in my opinion. Certainly my favorite. I'm really glad she recommended checking that one out early. I worked from the top down on this one. Some really beautiful sights to see in there. Um, all kinds of amazing antiques. Not just clocks. Mostly clocks, watches, and things like that. But, like, oh, so many cool build-ins. Like this, uh, what do you call, fragrance uh, shooter, like shoots out fragrances, but it also tells time and it's like cute and all that. I'm like, man, I'd want one of those. Uh, so really, really cool museum all around. And then you get down to the regular Patek Philippe part was more standard watches, more modern watches, less of these amazing antique ones. Again, birds flapping and singing while they're telling you the time, <laughs> you know, on the hour sort of thing. Amazing, really. So certainly worth checking this one out. I'd love to see some of those watches around today. And making my way back now for a fun-filled day tomorrow. So excited for tomorrow. Full day seeing more of Switzerland, not just Geneva. By the way, as I make my way back here, did I mention that avocado toast was nice uh, for breakfast? Was pleasantly surprised with that, with the vinegar and all that. Didn't expect to be a big fan, but it was quite a good one. Uh, and I figured out later it was a vegan restaurant. So that's super nice. Glad we had a chance to give that one a shot. Overall, fun day. And you can't see anything, which is, of course why we're calling it a day. Uh, thanks so much for helping make it an amazing day. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button because you know you liked it. Subscribe for more coming your way. And until next time, play on.